Hey guys, what's up? I uh, the Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next Clan Drifter video, and I am in without remorse. Uh, very glad to be here, a great clan, and uh, as you guys know, I bounce back and forth between all different types of clans. Before I get into this video, I want to quickly say, uh, because I've had a lot of people asking me, you know, are you going to visit clans that aren't winning most of their wars, that are struggling? And the deal with that is, I don't have anything against visiting a clan that's been losing lately. I want to visit a clan that's motivated because I'm not going into a clan in a clan drifter video uh, to try to, you know, uh, turn the clan around. It's not for me to help you guys, it's for me to show you guys what you're already doing and uh, to give you guys a chance and uh, show off all your hard work because um, the motivation has to be with you guys. Sorry about the notification. Uh, I'm not going to go in there and get the clan together and like get it running. Um, I'm just there to kind of be a journalist to show what the clan's doing, uh, how it functions. Uh, so the motivation comes from you guys, and typically the motivated clans tend to be winning. Uh, that being said, if you're a clan that's turning things around, you've lost a lot of wars recently, but now you're starting to, starting to get together, uh, make sure that's clear in your application, and I'll consider you guys, even if you have lost quite a few wars. Um, but the reason you see a lot of uh, successful clans is because the motivation that I look for uh, tends to be hand in hand with success in war so just wanted to clarify that but uh that aside we are in without remorse uh taking a look at a great clan here they actually have a pretty full clan but they're still uh recruiting actively and uh, i recommend applying we'll talk a lot about them uh, throughout this video as well as show some attacks um one quick thing also is that uh the war against indian empire actually has expired but i recorded the attacks last night because uh, i uh, thought it would be a good idea to get them in case they did go away, which they did. So I'm going to just splice those in uh, as the video starts in a moment. And uh, just want to let you guys know that because the attacks are no longer available live. So I'll just voice them over because uh, they are recorded right now without audio. So anyway, um, just a quick overview on Without Remorse before we get into the attacks. Um, they're self-described as a fair play, active, mature, war-focused clan, uh, three-star mentality, they're Town Hall 8 through Town Hall 11. Uh, they're starting to phase out Town Hall 8s, so it's mainly going to be uh, Town Hall 9 through Town Hall 11. Uh, they're an intense uh, clan. They war twice a week just to allow uh, for a little bit of balance, but when they do war, um, it's a very serious uh, type of war. They're a hardcore war clan. Uh, they keep it casual, though, outside of war, and typically farming is kind of just whatever you want to do, uh, but it's all business with war attacks base design and other tactics which they are constantly discussing and trying to develop. So anyway, that's a little overview. Let's take a look at some attacks and then we'll get into some specific information as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that Indian Empire War up. Okay, here it is, uh, the Indian Empire War. You can see uh, it was a close war, but they did a great job uh, clearing out the bases on the other side. Got the three star on number one, which we'll take a look at, and uh, pretty solid stuff. Kind of a smaller war, but that's uh, just how they've rolled. So um, as we start this mass bowler attack, which was a very nice one, it's always hard to get these max bases three-starred. Um, even if the layout's not the best, it still has separated Inferno Towers. Still, you know, a pretty solid anti-bowler base right there. And uh, we looking at uh, Anno or Anno getting the job done right here. Um, just a little bit of information as this thing starts. Uh, how old is the clan? The clan was founded in July of 2015. Um, and the history basically is it was founded by a group of co-workers uh, who were in a clan together but wanted to make that clan a little bit something better um, because uh, they didn't want the stagnation uh, that might have been the last clan and they also wanted a friendly and encouraging culture. Uh, so they started off with kind of a small 15-member clan uh, that was closed and uh, they were a little bit more into the two-star attacks just because um, especially early on people just didn't know what was out there. Uh, but that quickly changed and they made a transition to three-star attacks. Uh, they take pride in maintaining a fun atmosphere, even though they are a serious war clan when the war day hits. Um, so that's kind of a balance right there. But um, they've kept a very uh, closely knit group of players together, so it's really a nice environment. Um, and I've picked up on that as well. Um, but anyway, they've started to get into a little bit of larger, uh, more challenging wars. And uh, as you can see, they're up to about 48 members. And uh, at one point, or they want to at one point, uh, be able to start having some bigger wars. But I, I think some upgrading heroes and stuff might be limiting that. So anyway, that's just a quick history on them. You can see this mass bowler attack 
went pretty successful. The queen actually went to the outside, and uh, things did peter out in the core of the base. But one of the great things about this is if you still have your queen up, like uh, Anno does right there, the queen's just going to make her way through. And uh, without those infernos and with the kind of the point defense spread out like it is, uh, it's not going to be too much of an issue for her. And she'll just start making her way through, along with the warden on the other side, who actually is able to fend for himself a little bit. Uh, you can see him taking out a few buildings, and he can actually target that wizard tower without it targeting him, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so that one little golemite, which will make its way around. Uh, but the queen's going to finish everything off, along with the warden right here. And uh, you can see, go ahead and go times four, because just has that Tesla, uh, which can't reach anything until the queen's right there. So anyway, nice attack to Anno. We'll keep moving along. And uh, between attacks, we'll take a look at another question, which is, uh, I asked them, when did you start doing three-star attacks specifically? And uh, they made the transition uh, around November of 2015, so it was only a very short period of time that they actually were uh, technically a quote-unquote two-star clan, or just kind of before the real uh, cutting-edge three-stars. So a very quick transition. Uh, they wore twice a week, though, back-to-back -back over the weekend, uh, so battle day is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Monday, kind of in that range. Um, so that basically allows people to balance their uh, life outside the game as with uh, their clashing life, uh, which can take up a good amount of time. So it's a good way to keep people from burning out, and uh, it also gives you some downtime each week, uh, so you can do some hero upgrades and only have to gem a few days of them, uh, so you don't have to miss any uh, wars while level leveling up your heroes uh, if you spend just a, a short amount of gems or a small amount of gems to uh, bring them back uh, a few days before they're ready. So anyway, uh, that's kind of their war frequency. Looking at this attack though, you guys might have noticed it was kind of a double entry, which I thought was really interesting because he came in with a golem on each of those uh, top left compartments and uh, that really allowed him to prevent his troops from being flanked and the jump kind of connected everything. So kind of an interesting thing there. We usually don't see people enter in a base in like two adjacent compartments and then connect everything with the jump. But it's kind of like what you used to see when people used the Go Wee Wee attacks way back at Town Hall 10, uh, back in the day. Just coming in at different angles of the base and connecting in the middle, which actually was interesting here. The balloons were like super, super late. Um, but that's, you know, it's alright. still gets the job done here, just because the balloons will do cleanup along with a few extra troops that did survive. Uh, but the balloons could have been ages, ages earlier. Um, you typically want to get them down right before the air defenses start to go down. So by the time they come in range of the base, uh, the air defenses are just falling down. Uh, because balloons are not good cleanup troops. They're there to take out the defenses and protect your kill squad. So anyway, great attack though. It was definitely a fun one to watch. Um, moving right along, we have Ricochet. And uh, we'll do one more question, uh, which is about arranged wars. Uh, they actually have not done arranged wars in the past, but they're definitely open to them. They keep their weights uh, cataloged so they can easily set up a war uh, if an arranged one happens. So if you're in a clan that looks like you have similar weights to them, uh, go ahead and hit them up. I have a lot of links in the description, which I'll talk about uh, in a moment. So, uh, that I mean, I wouldn't count them out for doing an arranged war. Seems like they're interested in getting that started. So uh, if you're not interested in joining, you can still hit them up for an arranged war. Uh, like I said, links in the description. Uh, but anyway, uh, Ricochet's attack, I like how he used the poison, which made it so he didn't have to uh, drop a rage for his queen, or at least not immediately. Has to do it for the CC troops because the baby dragon and the wizards and everything are pr doing quite a bit of damage there. Uh, so the rage keeps her up. She'll keep moving into the base here in that little uh, uh, cubby inside the base. And uh, from there, he'll start in on the other side of the base with a giant few wizards just for a funnel, I think. And the queen's still moving, taking out some storages, but uh, as long as she's still up doing damage, that's the important thing. Has a jump, has his king moving in there. And uh, I like what I liked about this base, is, or this attack actually, uh, the base is okay I guess, but the attack is what I'm talking about. What I liked about the attack is how he kind of came in with the king here, um, and basically cleared out that little middle of the base where he suspected the giant bombs are and where they actually were. And then he kind of sent his hogs through on this little path uh, straight through the base from top to bottom, so did a nice job of kind of funneling his hogs through the base, has a heal for them, uh, which will drop a little early, but I think early is better because uh, you can't heal dead hogs, you want to get that heal sooner rather than later, and there was quite a few point defense. Um, there is a number of Teslas which are going to kind of start to uh, shoot in at those hogs, but he has so many left over uh, that they're going to make their way around, 
Uh, actually, no, I think the hogs do peter out, but the queen gets the job done along with like a wizard. And uh, very uh, cunningly, he drops that wizard on the Tesla to help take it out. Then that wizard will also help with cleanup. So the hogs do go down just because the Teslas were kind of spread out, unfortunately, along with a few other point defense items. Uh, but besides that, the queen is still up. She'll take out some of this uh, trash around the base and get the job done right here. So anyway, awesome attack to Ricochet. Uh, let's keep moving. We have a Town Hall 8 attack to show from this war, uh, so let's go ahead and get to that. Um, as far as some requirements for a player looking to join, uh, first thing is no engineered bases or modders accepted. Uh, so as long as you're fair play, you should have nothing to worry about there. Town Hall 9 Plus right now, they're looking to phase out Town Hall 8s uh, when their Town Hall 8s eventually upgrade. So uh, they're not going to accept any new Town Hall 8s, it looks like. Um, also, non-rush defenses and walls maxed for the previous Town Hall level as a minimum. So you can't go into, uh, you can't apply if your walls are the level 7 uh, purple blue walls like they are in this base. If you're a Town Hall 9, they have to at least be the max for Town Hall 8. Um, and that's probably going to be if you just transitioned. They'll probably expect them to be higher if you're more closer to max. So anyway, uh, the heroes do have some flexibility for applications, um, so you can request to join uh, if uh, at, at Town Hall 9 you have 15-15, Town Hall 10, 25-25, Town Hall 11, 35-35, uh, and 10 on your warden. Uh, war stars and activity levels are relative to your Town Hall level are definitely taken into account, so they're going to look at that uh, based on what Town Hall level you are. And there's no age limit, but you must be mature. And generally, they're going to be 18 plus, but I think there are exceptions. Um, but anyway, that's that for the requirements. You can see here a nice kind of surgical hog attack. A little bit of a low-level base, I know, but I wanted to show a Town Hall 8 attack. And uh, this was definitely a good one. You might notice that group of sacrificial hogs at the beginning. Uh, that just He kind of sent those uh, max CC hogs through to trigger one of the giant bombs in that double set. So right here, it's actually kind of interesting because... The hogs have to take on the witch, so you'll see uh, the witch is going to kind of start to uh, ad advance on them, but every all the defenses are down, so right here they're going to turn on her. Luckily they take out all her skeletons uh, before she can spawn some new ones, get her taken out. Uh, from there, this base is toast. So anyway, awesome attack to, what's this, uh, Invictus. Nice attack, man. And uh, anyway, I'm going to splice into the new... Uh, the new replays as we go into some more information about this clan. So let's take a look at the most recent war. Okay, this is the most recent war they've had against uh, Schweiss or whatever this is. Um, and not quite as close, the bases weren't as good. So I'm only going to show some of the top attacks because uh, the opposing clan had some pretty trashy uh, Town Hall 9 bases. Uh, but we'll take a look at some of the top ones. Uh, real quick though, I just want to let you guys know um, that as far as kind of where you can reach them, like for YouTube or Twitter, they have a Discord server. Um, I'll link everything in the description, by the way. Uh, but they have a Discord server, so you can kind of get to know them if you're thinking about joining. They have um, a YouTube channel, Amthical Gaming, I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, also be in the description. They have a video uh, specifically on recruit recruiting, and they have a recruitment page on the forums. So uh, you guys can check that all out below. Uh, let's take a look at one of these attacks, um, actually two of them, and again by um, Ano, I think is that, that's how I'll say it. Um, coming at this base, um, kind of more of a uh, forum type base, not quite as good as the first uh, three star we saw him have against a base that had those infernos spread out a little more. But still never easy to three star a max Town Hall 11. Uh, so, coming at this base with the Queen Walk does a great job with that baby dragon to get the funneling done. Uh, he's going to go ahead and poison the, uh, what's that, the, oh, the CC troops, obviously, because um, they're coming out. The double poison uh, works well. I don't even think he's going to need a spell for his queen, because uh, actually he might. Uh, with that warden, uh, the defensive warden locked onto his queen, uh, he uses the rage. Uh, but he'll get the benefit of that rage for a little longer, too, and the queen's just going to keep heading up north. Uh, letting her get great value, these cannons, um, all easy pickings for her as she just makes her way up north. Uh, so pretty solid walk right here. Um, there's the baby dragon for the other side of the funnel, and uh, from here he's going to send in his Valks and just get them to the core as quickly as possible, along with the warden. I uh, drops a golem in the tank. I might have not used that golem just because there's not, there's not a whole lot of DPS right at the beginning there. 
probably could have gotten away without using it, but no big deal, it still works fine. And the healers have switched on to the main force of troops, which is great, has the warden's ability, um, and then the rage, the heal, um, that entire base is going down so quickly. Uh, from here, you guys can see what happens. I want to talk a little bit about a few extra pieces of information uh, they gave me, which is kind of their war management tools. So uh, they use communication apps outside of the game. Um, Clash tools is required and uh, used for calling bases, attack planning, management, statistics, I think. Uh, they have a Discord server, which is optional but highly recommended uh, for out of game communication, voice chat, um, use it for base design, attack planning, providing feedback and hanging out, you know, all the general stuff, pretty similar to OneHive. Uh, you can also join them on Discord uh, if you'd like to chat there in the Recruits channel uh, by just getting the application and uh, joining their server, which I'll, like I said, link in the, the description if you want to chat with them on Discord. Um, but if, what, they, what they can offer you, this is kind of uh, another thing they talked about, is uh, a level 7 sister clan, Warrior's Journey uh, for your mini account, hero upgrades, practice, in any kind of periods of inactivity or less serious atmosphere. So kind of a, uh, a another clan where you can go if you want to get away from the war scene for a little while or just throw your mini account in or whatever. Uh, we're going to take a look at one more attack, by the way. Uh, but I do have quite a bit more information I have to get through, so kind of your typical uh, ring base right here uh, that you guys can check out as we go over the information. Um, also, they can offer you um, the out-of-game management tools, uh, which is really helpful for planning and becoming a great war attacker. Uh, the YouTube channel where you can be featured, um, or be featured on my channel, <laughs> uh, but a YouTube channel where you can be featured and uh, learn new attacks. So, Amethical Gaming, I'll definitely check them out. Um, I like watching some of the smaller YouTubers occasionally. Um, I assume they're, I haven't seen their channel yet, so I assume they're small, but either way, it uh, should have some good uh, stuff on there. Uh, dedicated leadership, uh, clan that engages with each other and the community uh, through videos like the Clan Drifter series. That was nice and they put that in there. And events like the live clash functions. Uh, competitive, engaged members, a sound culture with well-rounded three-star specialists, no donation requirements, so you can finally get away from all the pesky clans that say, oh, one-to-one -one donation ratio um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but and then clan personal professional balance while still maintaining a competitive clan and drama free environment So definitely has a lot to offer. That's just kind of what they wanted me to say their pitch basically uh, to new members or new people possibly looking to join um, but what differentiates them specifically from the other clans and uh, Basically, they're talking about their focus on three-star war attacks detailed strategy and consistent war wins but we don't war 24-7. Uh, this allows you to focus on other things going on in your life and not have to have Clash take over. So that's something that you don't see in many clans, but it's kind of a way to not have to you know, do this every day. You just do it twice a week, kind of towards the weekend, and then you can kind of get back to your life uh, during the actual week. So a nice little split there if you don't want to have to balance everything at once. Um, they're also willing to work with members uh, to become better clashers and work towards three-star strategies they may not be familiar with. So that's a nice little thing there. Um, finally, the application process. Uh, chatting with them on Discord uh, before requesting in-game is the best way to be accepted. You can also simply request in-game and they'll give you a look. Uh, mention this video, the clan rec recruiting video, or a forum post and uh, the leader ricochet in the join request for an expedited review. So uh, they are going to give you a much better chance if you can kind of differentiate, differentiate yourself from kind of the people that just apply for no reason in game. So talk about seeing them on my channel or watching some of their videos or seeing uh, kind of their forum post or just mention the leader's name Ricochet um, and kind of maybe if you know him or something like that. So kind of give a good reason uh, as to why you're looking to join and I would recommend just going onto their Discord server and really getting to get, to get to know them and decide if you want to join their clan. So anyway, that's that. The links will all be in the description below for you guys to check out, so I encourage you guys to do so if you're interested. Um, the link is also if you want to apply to the next Clan Drifter video in the description of this video as well, a little farther down, um, so you can see your clan featured on the channel. I haven't picked the next clan, so anything is there, anything's there 
off your game if you haven't applied already, or if your application will be significantly, significantly different from the first one, uh, you can apply a second time. I don't mind that. Just don't apply just to spam me with the same information. Uh, make sure your clan actually is different. And if that's the case, um, if they've changed a little bit, I'll take a look at the application again. So all that's in the description if you're interested. Thanks for watching this one. I would definitely recommend Without Remorse, as I do with all my clan drifter clans that I uh, can certify are a good war clan. Uh, like I said, that two time per war, two time per week war schedule is something that people uh, tend to enjoy, and you don't see that in many clans. So that's a bonus. Uh, but you can see how they have been reckoning in their war log, which, oh, silly me, forgot to show. Um, only a few red stripes, pretty much all of them close wars. Some of these even lost on percentage. Uh, so they've been fighting for a long time in kind of the high level war scene, and it uh, looks like they're still having close wars because some of the smaller clans tend to get close wars more than some of the bigger clans. Um, and they're not a small clan, but their wars have been a little smaller, although there are a few bigger ones in here. So anyway, uh, before I ramble on too long, um, check out Without Remorse if you're interested. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And I suspect there will be some live action for you guys to see from our potluck. So a little bit of a foreshadow to that. Uh, stay tuned for that tomorrow. See you guys later. Bisectatron out.